Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're covering Unit 5, Section 2 of AP Chemistry, which is about rate laws and how we write those. Now, a rate law is a special equation that helps us understand how the rate of a specific chemical reaction is going to take place. Now, as you can see here on the screen, in order to write a rate law, we have to have some experimental data. We can't just look at a balanced equation and use that to write a rate law. That's, that's not enough. We have to have a, a set of data. So here's a, an example of a balanced equation. And here we have some data. We have three different experiments. And in each one of these three experiments, we have an initial concentration of each reactant. So for example, in experiment one, our initial concentration of ClO2 would be 0 0.020 moles per liter. And for hydroxide ion, it's 0 0.030 moles per liter. And the initial rate of the reaction is 0 0.00276 molarity per second. And then we have these other two experiments as well. So if we want to find the order of the reaction with respect to chlorine dioxide, what we have to do is find two experiments where chlorine dioxide is the only concentration that's changing. Now, I'm going to focus on experiments one and two. And I'm going to do that because notice that the hydroxide concentration was held constant from experiment one to experiment two, while the concentration of chlorine dioxide was tripled. So I'm going to focus on experiments one and two. Now, as I do that, if I look at the rate, what happened to the initial rate from experiment one to experiment two? Well, if I put this in my calculator, I find out that it actually went up by a factor of nine. This number right here is nine times larger than that one. And that's just a simple calculation. So I can use this data to determine the order of the reaction with respect to chlorine dioxide. If the chlorine dioxide went up by a factor of three and the rate went up by a factor of nine, what is the power that makes that a true statement? Well, it's two. And so that means that the order of the reaction with respect to chlorine dioxide is second order. That's how that works. Now, if we want to find out what is the order of the reaction with respect to hydroxide, we have to do the same thing except with hydroxide. So let's find two experiments where hydroxide is the only uh, reactant that's being changed. Now, I could choose two and three, but that's not going to work because hydroxide is changing and chlorine dioxide is changing, and I don't want to do that. So let's do one and three. I think that's the best choice because hydroxide is being tripled from experiment one to experiment three, while chlorine dioxide is being held constant. So that's a good choice, one to three. Now, how is the rate changing from experiment one to experiment three? Well, I can possibly just eyeball that or I could divide it on my calculator. And I can see that this number here, 0 0.00828, is three times that number right there, 0 0.00276. So let's think about how that works. If I'm tripling the concentration of hydroxide and I'm tripling the rate, what is the power that's going to make that a true statement? Well, it's a one, isn't it? Three to the first power is three. So that tells me that the order of the reaction with respect to hydroxide is first order. Now notice, you could not have predicted that just by looking at the overall balanced equation. Now let's use this information to write the rate law for this reaction. Now the rate law has to be written in a very specific way. It's always written in this format. Rate equals K times the concentration of the first reactant raised to its power which in this case is chlorine dioxide to the second power, times the next uh, reactant raised to its order, raised to its power, which is hydroxide raised to the first power. So this is the rate law. All we have to do is write rate equals K, and then sub in these other reactants 
raised to whatever order we happened to determine them to be. So there we have the rate law. And it's not hard to do. You just have to remember to use the right format. Now, what is the overall order of this reaction? Well, the overall order is just the sum of the individual orders. So basically, just take these powers here and add them together. 2 plus 1 gets us a total of 3. So this is overall going to be third order. If you know the individual orders, just add them together, and that's your overall order. Now let's take this one step further. K that we wrote in the rate uh, law there, that's actually called the rate constant. Now let's calculate the numerical value of the rate constant for the reaction at this temperature. And of course, we have to use correct units. Now the way we do that is we actually take the rate law that we just wrote and we plug and chug the numbers from any one of these three experiments. Now it doesn't matter which experiment we use. If we're doing our work correctly, the rate constant should be the same no matter which experiment you use. I'm going to use experiment one just because it's it's there. So I'm going to plug it in here. The rate for experiment one was 0 0.00276 molarity per second. And we're solving for K. The ClO2 was 0 0.02 molar, and that's squared because it's second order. And then times 0 0.030 molar. I just divide, basically use algebra to divide 0 0.00276 by 0 0.02 squared and then divide by 0 0.03 and I get an answer of 230. Now the number is probably pretty easy to calculate. The units are a little bit trickier so I want to show you how we get those. Now I want you to notice that whenever we're solving for k we have to isolate that variable. So we have a molarity squared times molarity right here. So I hope you realize that's molarity cubed. So in order to isolate that variable, we have to multiply this by 1 over molarity cubed. And in algebra, if you do something to one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other side of the equation as well. So I have to multiply this side by 1 over molarity cubed. Now, of course, these three molarities here cancel out with that right there. On the left side, though, this molarity cancels out with only one of those three. So that's why it's one over molarity squared times seconds. Once again, in order to get this part of the question right, you have to be very careful with how you work your units. Now let's try another example here. We're going to use this reaction. It's the same type of problem. We're just changing the numbers and the equation. So let's find the order of the reaction with respect to NO. So once again, we're looking for two experiments where NO is the only reactant that's changing concentration. And I would pinpoint experiments one and two for that, because NO seems to be uh, doubling. Now, bromine is the same, it's constant, but what's happening to the rate from one to two? Well, if you take a calculator or just take a look at that, hopefully you can see that the rate is actually quadrupling. It's going up by a factor of 4. So what is the order? If we have a case here where the concentration is doubling and the rate goes up by a factor of 4, do you see what the order of that is? It's second order, isn't it? So this is a second order process with regard to NO. Let's try the same thing but with bromine this time. So let's find a couple of experiments that work for bromine. Now I would say 1 and 3 seem to be the best because in that one, bromine is doubling, but NO is constant in experiment 1 to experiment 3. So what's happening to the rate uh, from experiment 1 to experiment 3? Well, let's think about it. seems to be a doubling. So if we double the concentration and we double the rate, then that means our order is going to be first order. So bromine is going to be first order here. Now, that's the rate law, isn't it? We just take rate equals K times NO, and it's second order, so that's why there's a little 2 there, and then times BR2, 
and we don't have to write an, an exponent there since it's first order. Now, let's take this one step further. What is the overall order? Well, it's the sum of the individual orders, isn't it? So 2 plus 1 would be third order. Now, let's calculate the rate constant with the uh, correct units this time. So, once again, we're going to use that very same equation, the rate law that we just wrote, and we're going to plug in the numbers. Now, it doesn't matter which experiment you use. You're welcome to use any one of the th those three experiments. I'm going to use experiment one. So, the rate in that uh, experiment is 1.4 times 10 to the negative third molarity per second. And, of course, we're solving for K. NO in that experiment was 0 0.02 moles per liter. That's got to be squared since it's second order. And then bromine was 0 0.03 moles per liter. So I solve for K mathematically, and I get about 120. And I solve for the units the same way I did before. On the right side, I have to multiply by 1 over molarity cubed. And then I do the same thing on the other side, and I should get these same units. 120, uh, 1 over molarity squared seconds. Or if you put it all in the numerator, it's molarity to the minus 2 seconds to the minus 1. I hope you learned something about rate laws. If you were able to follow this, please shoot me a thumbs up there. hope you're able to write rate laws and determine orders and rate constants as you go forward in this kinetic section. Join me in my next video. We're going to find another way to determine the order with respect to a reactant. Thanks for watching.